All right, so hello everyone and welcome to today's online workshop. Today's topic is start contributing to WordPress through the WordPress training team. Um, and I am Ben. I am currently a training team representative. Um, so I represent the training team to the WordPress project. Um, so like if there are any decisions that are made in the training team, I let the WordPress project know. And also if the WordPress project wants to like channel information to the training team, that comes through team reps. So there are team three team representative or team reps um, in the training team this year. And I am one of them. So I am um, excited to share with you today um, what it means to contribute to WordPress and specifically contributing through the WordPress training team. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So the place we'll start today is on this website, make.wordpress.org. And I will drop the link in the Zoom chat as well. So wordpress.org is where you would go to download WordPress um, and install it on your server. Make.wordpress.org um, is a site all about the people who make WordPress and the teams that make WordPress. So if we um, look down the site here, you'll see we have altogether 22 different teams that build and maintain WordPress. So at the top, we have the core team, um, the core team looks after the core WordPress software. So these are the developers who um, are always updating the, the software, patching bugs for us. And when they release a new version, all of our WordPress sites, we get a pop-up saying, a new version available, let's update to the newest WordPress. Um, and then we can update there. So the core team looks after that software for us. Um, then there's also the design team. So if you're a designer, you can get involved there and they design like what the WordPress interface should look like. Um, each of the blocks has an icon. Um, what should those icons be? Um, what should the WP admin area look like, et cetera? So the design team does a lot of work um, behind the scenes too. And then we have, for example, the mobile team that create the WordPress mobile apps. We have the accessibility team that looks after the accessibility features of WordPress. We have polyglots, and polyglots translate the WordPress software into different languages. We have support that answers support questions on the forums and a whole lot more. I'm not going to go through every team right now, but as you can see, there are many, many different teams um, who contribute together to make the WordPress software. And halfway down the page, you'll see we have the training team. And this is the team I'm part of. Um, so the training team, let me read out, it says, the WordPress training team helps people learn to use, extend, and contribute to WordPress through synchronous and asynchronous learning, as well as downloadable lesson plans for instructors to use in live environments via learn.wordpress.org. If you enjoy teaching people how to use and build stuff for WordPress, immediately stop what you're doing and join our team. All right, so that's a bit of a long explanation, but basically, what the training team does is we look after the website learn.wordpress.org. So I'll open that and I'll share the link in the Zoom chat as well. There we go. So if you want to learn about contributing to WordPress, you go to make.wordpress.org. If you want to learn about the WordPress software, you would go to learn.wordpress.org. And we call this website Learn WordPress. So on Learn WordPress, we have many different types of um, content. So Sanjukta, you also shared before how you've sort of used resources from Learn in the past. Um, at the top menu here, you'll see we have tutorials, online workshops, courses, and lesson plans. And Contribute takes you to a page that explains how you can contribute to all this. So Learn has four different types of content. We have tutorials, which are about five minute long videos um, that walk through different processes in WordPress. Um, we have online workshops that are usually an hour long, um, just like the one you're joining now. So these are interactive sessions, usually hosted over Zoom, uh, where you can see live demos presented, you can ask questions um, in real time and get your answers. 
And it's a place where we can all share ideas. And um, we also have online courses. So these are the courses you work through on your own pace. Um, some of them have videos, some of them are just text-based. Some of them are more developer focused. Some of them are more uh, community focused. Uh, but these are online courses you can take and your progress is saved to your wordpress.org account. And then finally, we have lesson plans. Lesson plans are for teachers to use uh, when they want to teach a classroom about WordPress. So each of these lesson plans um, is an outline for a teacher and it has different questions they can ask the class, different activities they can walk their students through. Um, so these lesson plans are aimed at the teachers of WordPress. Um, so that's a lot of resource um, on Learn. And somebody has to look after all this. Somebody has to make the new resources. Somebody has to update the old resources. Somebody has to like listen to the feedback we get from our learners and apply that to the material. And so all that is done by the WordPress training team. So the WordPress training team, we create content for Learn WordPress. We maintain the website. We update the content. Um, and yeah, we apply people's feedback into the content there. Um, that's a very big overview of what the training team does. Let me just quickly pause there. Does anybody have any questions about Learn WordPress or the training team? Just a big picture of what we do. Nope, it doesn't look like it. That's great. So, um, the Learn WordPress website is about three years old. Um, the website was built in 2020. Oh, thank you for the thumbs up. The website was built in 2020, 2020 um, right around the time of the COVID pandemic. So um, you, until then, the main place people would go to learn about WordPress was at local meetups and WordCamps. Um, so, Cynthia, you shared with us how you've been part of different WordPress um, events in Switzerland. Um, those were the main places people would go to all over the world, all these meetups all over the world to learn about WordPress. Uh, but the pandemic happened, and so we couldn't host in-person events anymore. And so that's when the project, uh, WordPress project decided to launch the Learn WordPress website and make this the online place people can go to to learn about WordPress. Um, so WordPress itself is coming up to 21 years old. The WordPress software has been around for 21 years. Um, the Learn WordPress website has only been around for about three years. So it's still a fairly new website inside the whole WordPress project. Um, and, the web, and, the web, uh, and the website is going through a relaunch um, right at the moment. Uh, it's been redesigned where... There are a lot of content types right now. So we're um, combining some content types. So there will just be um, um, online courses um, and lessons you can look at. It'll make it easier for people to find the information they're searching for. And then it'll also make maintenance easier because there is a less content types we have to translate, less content types we have to update, etc. So the website is going through a redesign and hopefully the new website will be launched um, by July this year. So we're just three months away now. Um, hopefully we'll be able to present to the world a new Learn WordPress website very soon. Um, so that means right now, if you join the training team, not only are we creating new content and publishing content every week, um, we also have design work to get the, the new website design finalized. Um, and if you are a developer, um, there's development work where you can get involved and help us um, nut out the bugs and actually code the new design, et cetera. So there's a lot going on in the training team um, right now. All right. So how do you contribute to each of these WordPress teams? So there are over 22 teams um, in the WordPress project. How do you contribute to these teams? So I'm back at make.wordpress.org and each of these team names links to that team's log. So every team has a blog. So for example, I'm going to open the training team blog 
And this is what the blog looks like. So the first time you come to the blog, um, at the top here, you'll see the general black um, menu bar. Then you'll have the blue menu bar, which is specific to that team. So this is the training team's menu bar. And then you have a gray welcome box. Every team um, in this welcome box have some basic information about where the team um, does their contribution, how they communicate with each other. If they have meetings, when and where do the meetings happen? Um, so when, so the, if you want to start contributing, the first thing you want to do is open that team's blog and then look at their welcome box to find some basic information about that team. Um, so the training team, you'll see on the left here, we have a, a brief welcome message. And then are you new to the team? Getting started. Join the team through this self-guided onboarding program. Um, so you'll see that for the training team, we have an onboarding program to help you become a contributor um, in the team. So that's getting started. We also then have a link to current focus areas. So if you want to know what the team is focusing on right now, um, you can click here. Um, and then on the right here, we have our meetings under a calendar. So if you click on this calendar, this will show you the training team meeting times in your time zone. So right now I am um, in Japan. And so the times you see here are Japanese time. So each week we have a training team meeting that starts at 9 a.m. in Japan. Um, and then we also have a training and dev squad triage session that happens every two weeks um, at 4 p.m. Japan time. So depending on your time, this might be different. I will say the training team week, um, weekly meetings are designed so you don't have to attend live. Um, people attend these meetings afterwards and drop comments afterwards because the meeting happens in Slack. These meetings aren't video-based meetings. These are text-based meetings um, so that anybody can attend the meeting in their own time and comment on the meeting threads um, wherever you are in the world. Um, so, yeah, so when you want to contribute, you go to make.wordpress.org, you find the team you're interested in and open their blog. And then at the top of their blog, you'll find a welcome box that has a bit more information about how you can start um, contributing to that team. Let me pause there quickly for some questions. Um, from here, I will start to sort of go into the training team a bit more. Um, but if there are any questions, I'll answer them here. Um, let's see, Yeremi, could you advise which topic could be a good starting point for participating? Yeah, so um, it depends what area of ex like what, what you are uh, interested in. For example, um, if you are a developer and you like programming, then the core team might be a good team to start off. If you are a designer, then the design team might be good. Um, if you want to help people in the support forums, um, then the support team might be great. If you're interested in um, translation, then we have the polyglots team. Um, if, you're, if you like writing documentation, then we have the documentation team that looks after all the, the help documents uh, for the WordPress project. If you are interested in running meetups and WordCamps around the world, then we have the community team. Um, so it really depends. We also have like a marketing team. Um, it really depends what your interest is in. So my best recommendation is to go to make.wordpress.org and just read through all these explanations to see what these teams are about. Um, and that will probably help you find a team that clicks with what your interests are in. Hope, I hope that helps you, Remy. Um, and then let me um, ask the next question. Are those meetings sometimes mandatory to someone? Good question. Um, in the training team, no. Um, none of the meetings are mandatory. And actually, um, let me let me just you can let me just hide the welcome box. If you hide the welcome box, um, you can scroll down and you'll see the different posts that have been published on the team blog recently. Um, one of our recent posts is the training team meeting recap, 18th of April, 2024. So each week in the training team, somebody publishes notes from the training team's meeting 
So even if you didn't attend the meeting itself, you can still catch up on what was discussed um, by reading through the meeting notes. So the question was, are the meetings sometimes mandatory um, in the training team? No. Some teams might have some mandatory meetings. They aren't, they aren't usually mandatory, but for example, um, in the community team, if you want to become like a WordCamp organizer, um, then there will become some mandatory meetings. So it really depends on what area you contri contribute to. Um, yep, great, okay. Cool, so let me go back to the training team blog. Um, when you first come to the blog, you'll see the welcome box is open. So like me, once you come to the site a few times, um, you no longer need the welcome box. So there's a button to hide the welcome box like that. And then you'll see um, each blog has a similar layout. We have on the left, um, well, the training team at the top, we have our current focus areas um, and different projects that are in, in the works. <clears throat> and then on the left, you'll see a list of posts and comments people have made on the blog. Um, anybody can read um, posts on any of the WordPress blogs. Um, you don't need an account for that. Um, but if you want to reply to a blog post or like make a comment, then you'll need to create a free WordPress.org account. Um, so oh, thank you, Yeremi, for the thumbs up. Um, so anybody can see the blog posts, uh, but you'll need to create a free account in order to reply to blog posts. And I'll talk a bit more about that a bit later. Then on the right of the blogs, um, you'll see there's a search bar. But also, um, there's a place where you can enter your email address to subscribe to the post, uh, to the blog. So every time a new post is published, um, you'll get an email about that post. Um, in the training team, um, we publish probably somewhere between one or two posts a week. So it's not too many. Um, so some, if you're trying to decide which team to contribute to, something you could do is subscribe to the blogs for the teams, so for, for the for the few teams you're interested in. Um, have a look at the, the posts that come into your email, see which ones look interesting, um, and figure out where to contribute from there. All right. Now, going back to the top blue menu bar here, you'll notice there are three important links. So the first one is getting started. The second one says handbook, and the third one says faculty members. So these links will be different for each team block. So these are specific to the training team. In the training team, we have three links. Getting started is where you would want to get started. So if, if you've come to the training team, you want to contribute, you're trying to figure out where to start, this is the link for you to start. Um, this will take you to the training team's onboarding program. And I will um, walk through the program in just a moment. Um, but just so you know, this is where the getting started link is at. So you go to the training team blog, and then at the top, the getting started link. Next to that, you'll see a link to the handbook. So every WordPress team has a handbook um, that lists um, the documentation about the processes in that team. So let's open the training team handbook and have a look. When you come to the handbook, you'll see there's a table of contents on the left here and then the content on the right. So the training team, we have an about section with some different pages under there about team values, how we work together, what our contribution ladder is, et cetera. We also have getting started. And again, this will take you to our onboarding program. And then we have how-to guides. So how do we do all the stuff we do? Um, and each of these pages gives you a step-by-step -step, um, guide on how to do those processes. Um, further down, we have, uh, for example, online workshops. So if you're interested in running an online workshops, we have all the different steps here to help you run an online workshop. So the handbook has a lot of information. I do not recommend you just sit down and read through the handbook. There is too much there to um, understand. Um, but, once you do start to get involved with the team and you have questions, then you can always come to the handbook and search for your question here, and hopefully you'll find the information you're looking for. Um, every WordPress team has a handbook, 
Um, and it's usually linked to the team's blog. Um, so again, whatever team you contribute to, find their handbook, bookmark it in your browser um, so you can come back to it later. And then whenever you have a question, you can search in the handbook and hopefully you'll find your answers there. So the handbook is a very important resource for each of the Make WordPress teams. And then finally, the training team has a link to faculty members. So um, for those who have experience making educational content, you'll probably understand that making, for example, a tutorial video isn't simple. Um, it takes a lot of time. You have to um, research the topic. You have to write a script. You have to create the visuals that will be part of the video. You then have to record the video. And then in the training team, before any content is published, it always goes through um, three reviews. So you have other people review your video, they give you feedback, um, and then you go back and include that feedback in your video. And then finally, once it's all polished and updated, um, then you go and publish that. So the whole process of creating a video can take a good few hours. Um, for some people, that could be a few weeks. Um, and so the training team, we have the faculty program, and these are people who have said, I will dedicate a certain amount of time to the training team to make sure all these tasks in the training team get done. Um, we have different areas where you can contribute, say, just 30 minutes or one hour to, um, to help the training team move forward. But we also have things where we need people to dedicate a few more hours to um, in order to help the team move forward. And so these faculty, uh, faculty members are people who have dedicated that time. Um, some members have dedicated, say, two hours a month, um, and that's okay. Some members have dedicated 30 hours a week, um, and that's okay as well. So we have faculty members with different um, levels of um, dedication. Um, but the important thing is these people are familiar with the training team's processes. So if you start to get involved with the team and you have different questions, you can first of all search in the handbook for the answers, um, but you can also reach out to these faculty members and you'll see their names and their um, links all listed here. You can reach out to these faculty members and they will also be able to help you um, figure out what needs to happen. Um, so you'll see here, I'm second from the top. So the three people at the top here, Laura, myself and Destiny, we are this year's training team representatives. Um, so if you have any questions, any one of us um, would be more than happy to answer them for you and help you get um, involved with the team. All right, so just refreshing, we had a quick look at getting started, the handbook and also faculty members. Next, I'm going to start looking into uh, this page with everyone, the actual onboarding program. Um, but are there any questions people wanted to ask before we move into the details? No, looks like everybody is set. Right. Okay. So we've had a look at the overview of the different teams that make WordPress. Um, we've had a look at um, each team's blog and we've talked about their handbook. So now the training team, if you want to get involved with the training team, what should you do? So the training team's onboarding program, um, let, me, let me drop this link in Zoom, in Zoom so people can all start on the same page. All right. So this is designed um, as a self-guided onboarding program. So it takes roughly between 30 and 60 minutes for anybody to go through the program. Um, and then that will get you set up so that you can start contributing to the training team. It will also walk you through your very first contribution so that you can contribute something to the training team and um, the projects we work on. So getting started, uh, there's first a, a bit of a welcome message here. You'll see a familiar face um, of a recorded video. We'll just welcome you to the team. Um, we also have a transcript you can click and open. And then we start to talk about the three places we communicate. Um, 
So the training team, we communicate, first of all, on the team blog, we communicate in Slack, and we also communicate in GitHub. Now, most of the WordPress teams communicate in these same three locations, the team blog, in Slack, and in GitHub. Some teams have additional places where communication happens. Uh, for example, the, the uh, core team also use a, a um, application called Track, um, where they have discussions about different WordPress features. Um, so you'll want to look into each team to figure out where they communicate. Um, but these three are pretty much the same across most teams in WordPress. The team blog, Slack, and GitHub. In the training team specifically, the team blog is where we make decisions. So the team blog is the most public place where we communicate. Um, it is indexed by search engines. And so all our posts are recorded um, forever, almost on the internet. Um, so you can go back and, and see like what discussions have happened in the past. How did we come to different um, conclusions? I um, mean, this is, Again, where you'll be able to see where the most up-to-date discussions are happening in the training team and what decisions are being made. The second place we communicate is in a tool called Slack. And this is a text-based messaging to, um, tool. And this is where we have real-time conversations. So for example, um, if you are translating a tutorial video and um, you you've searched for the handbook and you've found the, the page that walks you through the process and you get stuck on step three and you just need somebody to help you with step three um, to get you to the next step. Um, what you can do is you can go into Slack, into the training channel and drop a question there. And then whoever's online can answer your question for you. So it's where you can get a real time help um, regarding training team processes. Training team meetings also happen in Slack. Um, so they are text-based messages in Slack. Um, and that's why anybody can come online later and they can respond to the different Slack threads um, and participate in the meeting. So the meeting notes in the training team are published three or four days after the actual meeting happened. And that allows people three or four days uh, for them all to chime in and give their input in the training team's meeting. Um, so meetings are not where decisions are made. Meetings are where we all check in with each other and um, help each other unblock different things. Um, but the actual decisions are always made on the team blog. And then finally, the third place we um, discuss or have communication is in GitHub. So GitHub is a tool often used by developers to track their coding contributions, but the training team use it um, for project management. So you don't have to be a developer um, to use GitHub in the training team. So let me show you what I mean. So I've just opened the GitHub training, uh, the training team's GitHub repository. That's a lot of information. That's a bit overwhelming. So what I really want you to focus on is this tab here, called projects. So if you click on that, and I will drop this link in the Zoom chat, <clears throat> this lists seven projects the training team works on. So the first one at the top, you'll see we have content feedback. So this is where learners on Learn, whenever they have feedback, their feedback lands in the content feedback project board, and then our editors review that feedback and then apply the changes to content. So this is where content feedback comes. We also have a project board for content development. So all our content creators track their content creation progress in the content development project board. We also have one for website development. <clears throat> so we do have developers in the team. This is where they look after the website development and all the coding um, that happens behind the scenes to keep the lone WordPress website running. We also then have a project board for content localization. So this is where the translators come and track their translation progress. We also have um, the Learning Pathways project. This is what we're calling the Learn Redesign and Relaunch. 
Um, we are launching the new site with Learning Pathways. So if you're interested in that work, you can look at our project board here. We also have a basic training team administration project board. And then finally, a learn uh, a topic vetting project board. So you'll see there are different project boards in the training team. And let's click on content development to see what that looks like. Each project board is made up of different columns. So you'll see we have one column here titled ready to create. And we have another column here titled drafts in progress. Then we have another column here titled ready for review. We have a fourth column titled preparing to publish. And then we have a final column published or closed. And each issue starts in the left column and they move to the right. So we first of all have ready to create. So we have 116 topics that we have marked as ready for anybody to come and create. So if you are interested in creating content, you would look at one of these issues here. Um, you can open it up and it has a bit more information about what the issue um, is about. And then you can start creating that content. When somebody starts creating a content, the issue moves to drafts in progress. So at the moment, we have 59 pieces of content um, that are being drafted by somebody. Um, so you'll see all those issues there. When somebody has completed the content, it then moves to ready for review, um, where it is then reviewed by other training team members. Every piece of content um, gets reviewed at least three times before it is published on Learn. So you'll see at the moment we have 21 pieces of content waiting to be reviewed. Once it's completed the review stage, it then moves to preparing to publish. And then once the content creator has done the final touches, it then moves to published or closed. Um, so you can see each project board is made up of columns and issues move through the columns. And this helps us manage the different projects in the training team. Uh, for this project board, you can click on the tabs at the top, and this will also give you another view of the different items in the columns. So for example, if you're interested in reviewing a piece of content, um, then you can click on the Ready for Review tab, and then you'll see we have 21 issues um, at the moment waiting for reviews. Um, you can click on any of these items, and then um, that will open a new tab like this, and you can leave your comments um, your review comments in the bottom here. So that's a quick overview of GitHub. So just coming back to our onboarding guide, the Getting Started onboarding page, the training team communicates in three places. We communicate on the team blog. This is where decisions are made. We communicate in Slack. This is where real-time conversations happen. And we also communicate in GitHub. This is where we manage our different projects. And so the onboarding program, the next thing it walks you through is getting set up. So it first of all helps you create a WordPress.org account. Um, this is needed to um, comment on the different blog posts. Um, it then walks you through creating a Slack account. So then you can join in Slack, join the training channel in Slack, and you can join in on the conversations there. And then finally, it um, guides you through creating a GitHub account so that you can then contribute to the different GitHub projects. All three of these accounts are free, um, so no money needed at all. Um, and um, yeah, each of these have further links um, for you to click on that will help you create those accounts. So let me just pause there for a moment. Um, are there any questions so far? Um, so there's a question here. I don't think I'll be actively involved, but I'm just curious, can anyone write a PR for that development? And the answer is yes. As long as you have a GitHub account, anybody can come to the training team's GitHub repository and write a PR or a pull request. Um, and then that will be reviewed by a training team uh, reviewer before it is deployed to the WordPress site. Um, so, oops. Let me just go back. There we go. All right, so here we have the Learn website development, Learn WordPress website development. 
Um, so you'll see here, like we have five issues. Um, for example, there's a bug reported here. There's a bit of feedback, um, another feedback. Anybody can click on these issues and create a pull request that would fix that issue. Um, and then again, pull requests are always reviewed by somebody in the training team. So that person will review it. And if it's accepted, your pull request will get merged with the Learn website. Um, and that's the same with any team in WordPress. Um, anybody can jump into GitHub, even for like the core team um, or the marketing team or the Polyglot translation team. Anybody can get involved. There's no requirement. There's no, there's no like experience requirement even. Um, anybody can get involved. And there'll always be other people there who will review your work first. And so you don't have to get too nervous. Um, and then, yeah, you can make your contribution. Does that, does that answer your question? So yes, anyone can write a PR for development. All right, and then we had another question. Localization is responsible for translating the learn.wordpress.org site. And so is that independent of the Polyglot team? Ah, good question. So I mentioned before that WordPress project has a Polyglot team and this team looks after translating um, the WordPress software. They look after translating plugins and themes. Um, but one thing the Polyglot team doesn't translate is content. So on the Learn WordPress website, um, for example, this, the text you see at, in the top here, this is part of the Learn WordPress theme. Um, and so that is translated by the Polyglots team. If I, tra if I change the local, um, the translation here, if you click on the language there, you can change the translation. So I'm in Japan, so I'll change that to Japanese. Um, you'll see the site turned into Japanese. Um, that's because all this is part of the, um, the site theme. And so that's translated by polyglots. However, if you come down to the courses, you'll notice these are still in English. Even, even though I've switched to Japanese, the actual content on the site is still in English. Um, and that's because polyglots don't translate content. And so the training team has a separate team of translators and these translators translate the content for us. So for example, for these tutorial videos, you'll see we have a few Japanese tutorials. These were created by Japanese content creators. Um, and so these exist in Japanese. And then we also have going to guess that's Bengali maybe? That, that uh, looks like Hindi to me. Hindi? Hindi? Okay. So yeah. yeah, so we have some content created by our Hindi content creators. Um, but then again, not a lot. Most of our content is still in English and we are looking for um, content translators to help us translate this into um, the different languages across the world. All right, any other questions? I then have just one more section. Um, oh, um, there's a question, translating content. Um, does that mean the translation is done using .plt files? Um, no, that means the, like for example, if, you, if we translate a video, somebody has to go in and recreate the video in that new language. Um, so they have to remake the, the images in the video. They have to rewrite the script in their language and then re-record the audio, et cetera. Um, and that's why it's a bit more complicated. All right. If, you, if there are any other questions, keep dropping them in the Zoom chat. Um, there's one more section I wanted to cover on this call before we wrap up in about 10 minutes. Um, yes, that would be hard. Yes, translating content is a, a bit time consuming. Um, 
And that is why we are always looking for more translators to help. All right, so I've come back to the onboarding page, the onboarding guide. Uh, we talked about um, where we communicate. We had a look at the three accounts to create in order to join the training team, um, a .org, WordPress.org account, a Slack account, and a GitHub account. And actually these three accounts um, you would use in pretty much every WordPress team. So even if you want to contribute to another team, um, you will still want to make a WordPress.org account and a Slack account and a GitHub account in order to contribute there. And then the final section I wanted to look at was find your interest and make your first contribution. So creating content actually has a lot of different parts to it. Um, and so the training team, we've split uh, the different areas of contribution in the team. Um, so we have five areas of contribution. Um, the first one is we call content creators. So these are people who make content. They make the videos. They make the online courses. Um, these are our content creators. And then we have content translators. So they take the published content, um, which is usually in English, and translate that into different languages. And then we have three other areas of contribution. We have our editors. So editors are people who, first of all, review content before it is published, um, because every content must be reviewed at least three times before it is published. Um, and then editors also look at the feedback provided by our users and apply those changes to the content. So they also edit content after it is published to make sure it is up to date and accurate um, and reflects um, the most current WordPress. We also then have subject matter experts. So when content creators build content, they might not necessarily know or be experts in the content they're creating. Um, so usually content creators work with subject matter experts. So the subject matter experts know the content really well. They do the research, they provide um, the information to the content creator. And then the content creator takes that and turns that into a five minute video or an online course. Um, so the subject matter experts help content creators. Um, and then finally, we have administrators. So with all these different parts in the team uh, working together, there's some administration work that happens in the background. And so we also have administrators who make sure the team runs smoothly. And so <clears throat> the training team's onboarding program, this first page finishes with the question, uh, find your interest and make your first contribution. So listening to all that, what, what are you most interested in? Um, does content creating sound the most interesting? Um, is it content translation? Is it editing? Is it becoming a subject matter expert? Or is it becoming an administrator? Depending on what your interest is, you can click on each of these links and they will take you to a separate second page of the onboarding program. So you'll see we're now at the content creator onboarding. And I'm not gonna go through this whole page um, today, but we'll just look at the topics. So it says introducing our faculty content creators. Um, so I briefly mentioned our faculty program. Each faculty member is part of um, the different area of contribution. So we have faculty content creators, we have faculty subject matter experts, we have faculty administrators, et cetera. Um, so this introduces you to the faculty members of the um, contribution area you chose. There is then a step-by-step -step guide to make your first contribution. So before you complete the onboarding program, you would have made some contribution to the training team. And then we have come add your name to our list of contributors. We'd love to hear your feedback. And then what's next? And this will then lead you into all the other contribution possibilities beyond onboarding. So, um, yeah, if you, after listening to everything I've talked about today, um, if you're still interested in contributing to the training team, then the best place to start is the getting started link at the top of the training team blog. Um, that will walk you through setting up the three um, accounts you need to communicate with the team. Once that's all created, find the area you're interested in, click on that, and that will guide you through the onboarding of your first contribution. 
And then you would be all set to join the training team and start contributing the team with the team um, on a regular basis. So Tapan, I just saw you gave a thumbs up. Thank you very much. Um, that's basically all I had prepared today. We can use the last five minutes for questions. How was that? Did that answer everybody's questions? Are there other things you wanted to ask that maybe I didn't cover in this hour? All right, we have a question. Um, do I have to create content only in English to submit new training materials? Um, the answer is no, you can create content in other languages too. Um, for example, I um, run Japanese online workshops every two months. And so these online workshops aren't translations of the English content. They're just brand new content, brand new online workshops I do in Japanese. Um, so for example, if you want to, I'm guessing your name is Korean. So if you want to make Korean online workshops, host online workshops like this in Korean, um, then you're more than welcome to do that. Um, the only thing we ask is that you find a, a, translation, a translation reviewer to review your work before it is published. Um, so we just want to make sure all our work is um, of good quality um, and that we're not misleading the community. And so, for example, if you want to build a Korean online workshop, uh, we ask that you find somebody else who speaks Korean who can be your co-host for you um, so that you can review each other's work and produce the work together. All right. Sanjukta, thank you so much. That was very informative. Great. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, are there any other final questions? Remy, great. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Cynthia, how do you decide what content needs to be produced? Is there a list? Okay, that's a good question. So um, right now, our priority is creating the, some learning pathways that become part of the relaunched website. Um, so let me let me open the um, GitHub project board again. So if you come to the onboarding, we're on the onboarding guide. And then um, here we have at least six project boards. If you click on that, that takes you to our project boards. Um, in general, if you go to the content development project board, any item under ready to create is something you can start creating. Um, so we have 116 topics that somebody has already vetted and um, figured out this is important for the Learn WordPress website. So you can take a look at any of these and start creating that. Um, but at the moment, um, most high priority content is part of the Learning Pathways project. And what we're doing is under content creation, we have learning pathways for different levels of users. So we have the beginner user learning pathway, we have the intermediate user learning pathway, then an expert user. And then we have beginner developer, intermediate developer, et cetera. So for example, if you click on intermediate user, what we've done is we've created a curriculum of different content that is going to become part of this intermediate user learning pathway. So for example, module one is about changing hosts and domains. And then we've identified, we want to create these two lessons that become part of this module. Um, if there's a tick on the left here, that means that one has already been completed by someone. Um, and so you can skip over that. But for example, um, module four, content creation. Um, first lesson is taking advantage of qu query loops. The second one is using the comments block. Um, so each of these um, will require another three to five minute video. Um, and so this would be a great place for you to find something you're interested in and create content for. Um, in, so once we launch Learning Pathways this summer, this high priority content will be created. So up after we do that, um, we will be going back to our normal process 
where we go to the content development project board and we work through the ready to create items here. Um, if there is something you want to create that isn't part of that board already, we also have a topic vetting um, project board. So in GitHub, you can create a new issue and say, I want to create a content about this specific topic. And you'll see we have 31 items under awaiting vetting right now. So there are 31 ideas people have submitted here. What happens is a subject matter expert comes along um, and they have a look at each of these ideas and see if it's uh, relevant to WordPress right now, um, if it's high priority or not, and they'll give you feedback um, if, um, if they have different ideas about how to make that content even better. So all topic first of all gets vetted and then it lands in the content creation um, project board underneath the ready to create and then anybody can start creating from there. Cynthia, I hope that, I hope that helps. Um, if you are interested in becoming a content creator, the best thing I recommend is creating a WordPress.org account, creating a Slack account. Once you've created Slack, we can connect in Slack um, outside of online workshops. And then either me or anybody else in the training team can guide you to all this information again. I know there's a lot I explained today, um, but we can guide you to this um, information again and help you um, decide which content to start creating. All right, um, Tapan, thanks for explaining everything. This was easy, great to hear. Cynthia, uh, thank you for that help. Learning part is interesting. Yes. Um, this is brand new for the Learn WordPress website. So we're excited um, about presenting that to the world in July. All right. And that takes us to the end of the hour. Um, so thank you everyone for attending. Um, yes, if, if there's anything I want you to take away from this presentation, it's our getting started guide. Um, book, um, linked at the top of the training team blog here. Um, walk through this onboarding program, get connected in Slack. And then once you're in Slack, we'll be able to help you in real time um, to work through the rest of your contribution journey. Um, thank you for joining today. And I look forward to seeing everybody soon. All right, then have a good day. Bye.